Before we get into regular expressions in more detail, it's important to look at some of the underlying maths involved. So in this video, we're going to look at the concept of set and set comprehension, be familiar with what an empty set is and how we can list it, and be familiar with compact representation of a set. We're also going to cover the concepts of finite sets, infinite sets, countably infinite sets, cardinality of a finite set, and the Cartesian product of sets. So let's get started. First of all, in maths, what is a set? Well, it's simply an unordered collection of values or symbols in which each value or symbol occurs at most once. So this is typically how we define a set. We've got a set called x equals, we open our curly brackets, and then we list each of our values in that set separated by a comma. <clears throat> it's important to understand some common sets which were available in the shorthand notation. So if we just want to represent an empty set, we can simply use the open and close curly brackets, or we can use this symbol here. So that's uh, the shorthand for an empty set. There's a few other special sets to be aware of. Um, we can specify the set n using this notation here. This is the infinite set of natural numbers. This includes zero, but doesn't include negative numbers. And um, it includes every whole number upwards onto infinity. The dot 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 meaning that the set continues in the obvious way. Natural numbers are whole numbers that are used for counting. So we'd say, for example, five bags of sugar, 50 tickets sold. Z, using this special symbol here, is the shorthand for the set of all integers. So this is similar to the previous set N, but it now includes all negative numbers continuing on to infinity. The short sand symbol for a set of all rational numbers is Q. And this is any value which can be expressed as a ratio or a fraction. Now it's important just to note here that this set, of course, includes all of set Z, because any integer can be expressed as a fraction. So the whole number 3 could also be expressed as a fraction as 3 over 1. On top of this, we have R. This is the set of all real numbers. So this is pretty much all possible real-world quantities. This set, therefore, encompasses all of Q, Z and N. This covers virtually everything, fractional numbers, fractions, minus, positive, things like pi. It doesn't, however, include imaginary, uh, imaginary numbers sometimes used in mathematics, such as infinity. So now we've gone through some of the common sets, let's look at some of the other terminology used in regular expressions. First of all, a finite set. This is a set whose elements could be counted off by the natural numbers up to a particular number. So, for example, here's a finite set, and we can say 100 is the fifth and final number in this set. So it's a set whose each individual elements can be counted off by natural numbers up to a particular number. Another example is the finite set of all prime numbers up to 97. We have cardinality. This simply refers to the number of elements in a finite set. So, for example, here we'd say the set X has a cardinality of 5 and set Y has a cardinality of 25. It has 25 elements. We then have infinite sets, which we've already touched on, and these are represented by the three dots at the end or the beginning. And it's a set which has no end value. So n, z, q and i are all examples of infinite sets, because they never end. We then have countable. That's a set which can be counted off against a subset of all the natural numbers. Now, countable sets are either finite, which we've looked at already, or a countably infinite set. Now, we're going to look at that in a moment. But whether a finite or infinite set, the important point to note here is that the individual elements of a countable set can always be counted off one at a time. Although this counting may never finish in, a, in the sense of a countably infinite set, every element of the set is still associated with a unique natural number. So just to clear that up, here's a countably infinite set. It's a set where you can count off the elements 
against the natural numbers, but it goes on forever. So a good example of this is the set n. You're able to count off each element against the natural numbers. The set goes on forever, but we can say the first number is 0, then 1, then 2, then 3. We always know what the next one's going to be, so we can count them off. R, for example, is not considered countable. There's no way of listing off or counting all the numbers in R. If you were given any single real number, for example 1.00456, there's no way of knowing what the next number is going to be. OK, so now we've got some of the basics out of the way, we've got to get our head around set comprehension. Now here's an example of a typical set comprehension you might see in the exam. Now, when you first look at it, especially if you're um, not, for example, an A-level math student, this may uh, look quite daunting to you. But it is quite simple once we break it down. It's first important to understand what some of these special symbols mean. So, the B equals and the curly brackets represent our set as we've established. So we're saying B is a set. And that set consists of whatever this is. Now the green line reads such that this kind of weird E symbol means belongs to and this symbol means and. Now we're going to take another look at this set comprehension but we're going to write it out in English using the knowledge we've just got and it should start to make a lot more sense. So we've got the set B equals n squared such that n has to belong to the infinite set of natural numbers, which includes 0, and n must be less than 5. So let's just look at that again. The set B is going to be n squared. We've got to make sure that n belongs to the natural numbers, for the natural numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, but only where n is less than 5. So we've discovered now that we've got to use the natural numbers n less than 5, so that's 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and each n is going to be n squared. So 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and 4 squared is 16. So b equals n squared, where n belongs to all the natural numbers and n is less than 5. In other words, using this shorthand, this set comprehension, we've now said the set b equals 0, 1, 4, 9 and 16. We've also got to look at the Cartesian product of two sets. And this is simply the set of all ordered pairs, a and b where A is a member of set A and B is a member of set B. Now we write it like this, A times B, and we speak it saying A cross B. Looking at example makes it really simple. So here I have set A and it's got three values in it. Here I have set B and it has three values in it. We're going to perform the Cartesian product of set uh, A and B. So we say C is A cross B. And you can see there, the Cartesian product of set A and B is the first value from set A and the first value from set B. Then the first value from set A and the second value from set B. The first value from set A and the third value from set B. We now go back to our original set A and we take the second value and we concatenate that with the first value of set B and then the second, and then the third. And then finally, we travel to the third item of set A, and join that with the first item of set B, and then the second, and then the third. If all that was a little bit rushed, just pause the video and go back through. It's important you get a grounding in the basics of the maths behind regular expressions before you move on to some of the later videos.